Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. I know it has been a very long time since I posted my last video, but with good reason. I've been really busy at work. We've been doing some renovating here around the house, the basement, the garage is a bit of a mess, and I had to move all of my PC equipment into a different location for now. But I did have this old IBM PC XT lying around here that I actually want to pass on to somebody else. And I thought it would be interesting to make a video on it just to see what it will take to get it up and running again. Because I think it will have some issues. So a true IBM Classic. On the back you notice that there are a couple of screws missing. And it seems to be missing a graphics card also. So that's a bit of a shame but I should have a replacement. The power supply is also a little bit out of alignment here, so I hope that this isn't one of those PCs that somebody threw together really quickly to get rid of it. But I do see these two tantalum capacitors just casually sitting here on the main board, perhaps waiting to pop. So yeah, always very exciting to start a PC like this because this one has probably it hasn't been started probably in like 20 or 25 years. On the back it looks pretty clean. It's missing a graphics card, but we do seem to have a parallel port. The power supply isn't really uh, fastened properly, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. It seems to be in pretty good shape. So we have a parallel port here. We have a probably the floppy drive connector and a serial port. On the front we have the iconic IBM logo with the cool full height tanned on 360 kilobyte floppy drive. It is a bit yeah, tricky to get it open. It's probably been sitting uh, collecting dust somewhere for a very long time and this one also has the probably 20 megabyte or perhaps 10 megabyte MFM hard drive. So let's open up the case and see what we have inside. It is a bit dusty on the inside so we'll definitely need to give this a little clean. And we have the traditional configuration, the big power supply, no idea why this isn't secured properly. I've had pretty good experiences with these kind of power supplies, so let's hope for the best. We also have an IBM Type 13 20 megabyte MFM hard drive and the full height IBM tanned on floppy drive and some expansion cards that we'll be taking a look at. And first up we have the IBM Async adapter card with the 25 pin serial port. Pretty common back in the day. Next one is a little bit bigger and sits alongside the floppy drive and it is in fact the IBM floppy drive adapter card. So it's hooked up to the floppy drive using this ribbon cable. Classic IBM card. Also has an external connector. Next up, the biggest card of them all, which is the MFM uh, hard drive controller card. Another IBM Classic hooks up to the hard drive using these two ribbon cables, the data cable and the control cable. And this is the Xebec original uh, MFM hard drive controller. And finally, probably the most modern card in this PC, which was probably added afterwards, which is this parallel port. Now this PC didn't come with a graphics card, but I did have one lying around here. Unfortunately, I have no idea if this one works. It does look like an MDA monochrome type of video card, so it should suit this PC nicely. But again, probably not the best idea to try it on a PC where you don't know if the PC works and you don't know if the graphic card works. But let's give it a go. And upon starting, I heard this little popping noise on the floppy drive, so let's look at this again. So something definitely popped, I don't know if it's the capacitor there on the bottom left or if it's the, the green component on top. So probably best to shut her off right now. Now on my second attempt the following happened. 
Again a pop, but a bigger one now with a big puff of smoke. And I'm pretty sure that this time it was the uh, capacitor there which was sitting there on the left. But we are already getting some beeps out of the PC, which is a good thing. So let's take a look at the monitor and see what this one is displaying right now. And this doesn't look particularly good. Um, the monitor is kind of acting up. Uh, I'm in constant fear that something will blow up on this machine. And yeah, the weird characters do seem to indicate an issue with the graphics card. So yeah time to do some debugging here and hope that nothing blows up in the process. Now I did want to see what the PC would do with a different graphics card so I added another MDA uh, graphics card and I got the long beep followed by the two short beeps that typically indicates an issue with the video card or the configuration of the video card. I didn't think too much of it because I was pretty excited to see a blinking cursor on the monitor. And a blinking cursor is normal on a standard IBM PC, but on an IBM PC XT you should see a memory count popping up. Now the IBM PC contains a switch block here where uh, switch number 5 and 6 uh, indicate what kind of video mode that you want to run the PC. Now this is currently set to CGA 80 column and I wasn't aware of that at the time. Now obviously this is not a CGA uh, monitor. But the video card that was attached to it was this auto switching dual display adapter set to mono mode using the jumper there on the left. So this would work very well with the IBM monitor if the switch block was configured correctly, which obviously it was not, hence the blinking cursor on the display. Now things were going south with the monitor pretty fast, as even with the blinking cursor it started acting, acting up again. And you saw this big flashing vertical line popping up. And in the end, the monitor just completely died on me. It didn't give any output anymore. Nothing was shown on the screen. So yeah, my guess is that the monitor was already on its way out. I don't think that the misconfiguration of the dip switches can kind of kill your IBM 5151 monitor. So I think this was just bad luck. But with the dip switches configured correctly and a brand new IBM 5151 monitor to play with, I was able to start the PC and I did get the memory count right off the bat. So no more blinking cursor, but we actually have a memory count. So we have 640 kilobytes of RAM which is pretty standard for this type of PC. And much to my surprise, the hard drive is in fact initializing. You can see it spinning. And because there is no disk present, it will start booting from the hard drive, hopefully. So we get the LED flashing and there is hard drive activity, which is really good news. And as you can see, the PC is booting. It asks for the time because there is no built-in clock. It boots into MS-DOS version 5 and displays this gorgeous menu. So this is from kind of a European school. It has this kind of menu system. I have no idea how this menu works. But the good news is that the PC is running. It boots from the hard drive. There are no doubt issues with the floppy drive, hence the... Uh, components which were exploding and we have lost the IBM 5151 monitor unfortunately. So let's take a closer look at the PC itself now. So yeah, I find it really amazing that you can actually just start this PC and find a working 20 megabyte hard drive, all of the files still accessible. I'm pretty sure that this PC has been sitting idle for I don't know, probably like 25 years or something. So obviously you're going to have some components that will pop, hence the disk drive issues. But other than that, this machine is still going strong. Here we have Turbo Pascal, which is installed on the system. So let's see if we can load up a 
game here. We have breakout here written in Turbo Pascal so we can compile it and run it on this uh, 30 or almost 40 year old computer. And it should work just fine. So it'll take a while to compile all of the files here. And what you should end up with is this gorgeous breakout game. So yeah, it's not a speed demon, but gets the job done. So yeah, really cool. But now let's continue with the disassembly and we'll start with the floppy drive, which is held into place with these two screws here and then it just slides out. We're also going to be removing the graphics card here, which was the only card we had installed. And then we can remove the motherboard. It takes a little bit of wiggling to get it out of the case as it's held on with these plastic clips. And we do the same thing with the power supply, which wasn't uh, fastened at all. But yeah, it seems to be in pretty good shape. To remove the hard drive, we need to get to the bottom of the case here, where we have this hidden screw that they use to uh, attach the bottom side of the hard drive to the case. So we need to remove that. And then we can slide out the gigantic 20 megabyte hard drive. And I mean, just look at this thing. I mean, this is an absolute beauty and it's really amazing that this is still working after all this time. Now I did decide to take it outside and clean up most of the dust from the case and the components just to make it a little bit nicer to work on. This is not gonna be a thorough cleaning because I was a bit stressed for time and I did wanna make sure that the next owner of this machine also has its fun with it. And here we have it all of the components that make up an IBM PC XT. I'm not going to go into detail on all of the individual components. I have another video which explains the uh, components of an IBM PC XT, so I highly recommend you check that one out. I'll put a link into the description and you should see a card here. But I do want to quickly go over the fact that we have the main board here, 640 kilobytes of RAM, we have the Tandon floppy drive with the blown capacitor. We have the power supply unit, which still seems to work. Hard drive, which is fully functional. A video card that I added that I know that works. We have the floppy drive adapter, the hard drive adapter, a parallel and a serial adapter card. And here we have the classic IBM PC XT motherboard with the 8088 CPU. We have the BIOS chips here and the switch block that I forgot to check to see if the settings were set correctly. Here we have the 640 kilobytes of RAM. We have eight ISA slots for expansion cards, which was needed back at the day because this board offered very little functionality out of the box. Now, this is a uh, 256, 640 kilobyte system board. There were different variants of this, but fully populated. This board came with 640 kilobytes of RAM. Here we have the power supply unit with just two Molex connectors, one for the hard drive, one for the floppy drive. So this provided ample power for the hard drive and the floppy drive and seems to be in pretty good shape. So this is a brand that is often seen in uh, IBM PCs. And obviously you have the big clunky power switch here, which is yeah, still a bit dirty. Next up is a hard drive. So this is a type 13 20 megabyte MFM hard drive from IBM. I think my other IBM PC XT came with a 10 megabyte Seagate MFM hard drive. So. Yeah, this is a real work of art. I mean, just look at this PCB and the different components and the colors. This is, yeah, really nice uh, piece of technology. And amazing that it still works. I mean, uh, here we have the floppy drive. I had uh, not that much luck with this one. Um, so we obviously already have a capacitor that has popped, as you can see here. Quite a big chunk has blown off the capacitor. And also, the, the I think it's a line filter, the green component sitting on the right to it, uh, also sustained some damage, I think. But again, a lovely piece of engineering here. Just look at the PCB, all of the cables, all of the mechanics here. Yeah. 
The hard drive controller is the Xebec one. So this is a later revision than the Xebec con controller, which is found on my other IBM PCXT. As uh, this one, uh, I believe, yeah, you, so you can see here we have the switch block here. So this one, in fact, allows you to configure different types of hard drives. Well, I think two or four types of hard drives are supported on this controller primarily 10 and 20 megabyte variants uh, of hard drives whereas my other Xebec controller only supported one type of hard drive the 10 megabyte Seagate one floppy drive controller card so here you hook up the Tandon 360 kilobyte uh, floppy drive standard IBM card and for I.O., we have the Async adapter here, which offers you a 25-pin serial port. So the 9-pin serial ports weren't that popular back in the day. And this is a more recent card to add a printer port to the PC. And finally, the video card, which is an interesting one. So this is an auto-switching dual display adapter, allowing you to set it into mono mode and color mode. Now this is in essence an MDA slash Hercules type card, but you can also set it in uh, CGA mode uh, so that it will uh, display up to four colors. Now uh, I did measure the uh, horizontal and vertical sinks on this thing just to make sure that this didn't kill the monitor. And you know, despite the settings on the main board, the output on this card was always 18.43 kilohertz and 50 hertz. So this should have worked fine on the IBM monitor. But that's all I have time for in this video. So in the next video, I'm going to be working on the floppy drive. I'm going to be disassembling it, see what's actually wrong with it, uh, because it is not reading any floppies. It is spinning. It is moving the heads. But it's not able to boot from a floppy disk or read any floppy disk I throw at it. So. Yeah, definitely still an issue there. And spoiler alert, I can already tell you now that it took a lot more than cleaning the heads to get this thing up and running again. So I hope you stick around for the next video. It should be out very soon. You won't have to wait another two months for it, I promise. So to all my viewers and subscribers, stay healthy, take care of one another, take care of yourself, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.